Good morning, everybody. My name is Courtney Morgret. I am a senior scientist at AbbVie, and I'm happy to be talking with you today about ADC manufacturing and ways in which we can accelerate the CMC timeline, excuse me, to keep it off the critical path. I have experience within AbbVie, um, both as a CMO and working with CMOs for ADC programs. I'm within the operations group in science, tech, science and technology. So I take products from late stage development through validation and to commercial launch. So some of the things I'll talk with you about today are about how we can accelerate programs knowing that ADCs have the potential to be filed, for example, with phase two data. Oh, excuse me, I'll stay right here. <laughs> Um, so what is an ADC? Just taking a, a brief step back. So an ADC is an antibody drug conjugate. And that enables the harnessing of the specificity of an antibody with the mechanism of action of a small molecule. So by combining these two aspects, we can really unleash some new therapies to meet some unmet medical needs for our patients. There are a handful of ADCs that are approved on the market today and many, many more in the pipeline. And as I mentioned, the opportunity to meet these unmet medical needs um, is great for our patients. And our job within CMC is to keep the program moving forward so that we can get those products to patients as fast as possible. So for example, with the FDA, there are a number of mechanisms by which a program can be accelerated. And this basically boils down to the, the unmet medical need and showing efficacy early on in your clinical trials. And so you can file with phase two data as opposed to the typical phase three data required for other programs. And this acceleration can happen at many different points in the development process for your ADC. So as a manufacturer, you need to be ready to go at a moment's notice to bring forward that program as fast as possible. And so I've mentioned CMC, so that's chemistry, manufacturing, and controls. And that is a critical part of the filing dossier that demonstrates that you can manufacture your product consistently and reproducibly every single time. And so this has no relief when you have an accelerated program. You might have fantastic clinical data. You still need to demonstrate that you can make your product the same way every single time. So our objective here and what I'll be talking to you about is how we can leverage some prior knowledge and how we can utilize some tools to make the CMC program go as fast as possible considering the clinical data are compelling enough to file soon. So there are some manufacturing challenges associated with ADCs. Because you are taking a biologic and a small molecule and combining them, you get the benefits, but you also get some of the challenges associated with it. So first off, there's a very complex supply chain. You have to have your biologic manufacturing, you have to have your small molecule, typically highly potent manufacturing, then the conjugation of those two entities, and finally a fill finish step. So this can take many different manufacturing facilities uh, and very complex supply chain and orchestration to make that all come together. Then there's also the handling aspect of ADCs. So as a biologic, you need to protect the product from the personnel, and as well, you need to protect the personnel from the product when you have that highly potent small molecule and then conjugate. And then product heterogeneity. So biologics tend to be a variety of variants, if you will, of your product. So to understand what your product is, you need to have a suite of analytical tools available to characterize your product and to know what it is that you're making and then how to control it. So one very important consideration is the selection of a CDMO. Because, as I mentioned, there are many different manufacturing nodes associated and many different techniques and expertises that are required to manufacture an ADC. And by partnering with an experienced CDMO, they can help you accelerate your program and keep CMC off the critical path. So some of the themes I'll talk to you about today are strategic supplier selection, experience that is necessary to manufacture your product, Process characterization is a critical aspect of the CMC package, and then the analytical understanding. So when at all possible, it's great to have a CDMO that can manufacture multiple components of your ADC. This gives you flexibility in scheduling, so that 
you can time up your manufacturing runs for your biologic and your small molecule to meet your drug product needs. And also reduces shipping, of course. Also, operating under one quality system can be very beneficial because you can forward process materials with a limited subset of testing because you're all within that same quality system and that same manufacturing supply chain. Of course, you need a strong um, project management to support all of these various nodes that are happening at the same time. And another consideration is to transfer early to your commercial supplier because that avoids the need for a tech transfer later on in development, which could require time and resource. Um, so if you can get to your commercial supplier sooner, then you have supplied your clinic with that same process and manufacturer, and it makes the filing much more straightforward. So when you want to look for the experience to leverage for your acceleration, you want to look at product understanding, you want to look at manufacturing experience, and you want to look for regulatory experience. So in terms of the product understanding, as I'd mentioned, an ADC can be heterogeneous. And so understanding the analytical techniques that are available to characterize and then control your product are very important. Um, process characterization, I'll go a little more detail in a later slide. This is a key component of your development program. And so in order to characterize the process, having that history of doing it for other programs, especially with biologics and small molecule, would be very beneficial. And then comparability strategies, I'll, I'll go into this a little more as well, but the idea being that anytime there is a process change, a site change, a material change, you need to consider, is your material comparable to what you've made historically? So within manufacturing, tech transfer is obviously important. You're going to go from some small scale work, some GLP tox materials, and transfer into a larger scale. So understanding of how that tech transfer happens is very important. And then process validation, of course, um, for a biologic, the process is validated before filing. So having a good understanding for how to validate a process, especially with limited batch history, is important to know. And platform knowledge helps with that. And then regulatory experience. So typically, with an accelerated program, you have the opportunity to engage more with the agency to bring your program forward more quickly and bring those products to patients. And so having experience engaging with the regulators and as well understanding what data can be included in the initial filing and then what data can be added later um, and having experience with those conversations is, is very beneficial. So I mentioned process characterization. This is a very key component of the CMC dossier. The primary aim is to ensure that you have a robust process that is appropriate for commercial launch. So what you've done in, in one or two batches in development um, and that you've supplied the clinic with, how do you ensure that your process ranges are defined and that you're making consistent product every single time? So the thought process for this is starting, of course, with the patient safety and efficacy. That's the core of process characterization. And then you layer in your control strategy on top of that. So you take your critical quality attributes that are defined based on your safety and efficacy, and then you define control points around those. So control points can be items such as material inputs, critical process parameters, ranges for those parameters, and process controls, and of course your quality testing at the end. So this is a very complicated endeavor, and so a clear strategy ahead of time of how you can pull together this process characterization package is, is very important so that you have the end in mind when you engage with that activity. So I'm just going to walk through an example here of how process characterization times up with the filing. So for a traditional program, you have your process characterization activities, something along the lines of maybe a year and a half worth of work. And after that, you go into PPQ. So you've taken your process characterization, you understand what it is that you need to do to control your process, and then you validate that. So you demonstrate, let's say, three times that you are hitting the same product profile every single time. And that package then goes into the BLA. One strategy that I've participated in for my own programs is moving up the PPQ a little bit earlier into the process characterization timeline and doing it in parallel. So there's a subset of work that is done ahead of PPQ in order to know what your likely ranges are, what your critical process parameters are, and what those ranges are. And then you go into PPQ and then fill out the rest of your process characterization package 
in parallel. And so this is a good way to cut off some time of the developments. So you can file earlier if you have um, compelling clinical data. And an even more aggressive approach, which I've also been involved with, is doing the minimal amount of work to show basically site fit and then going into your PPQ activity. And so it's, it's possible, but it's also very risky. And so what you need to do then is ensure that you understand what your process is because you need to go in basically at risk to PPQ. So you have to have a good understanding of your platform process and as well as your analytical techniques to ensure that at the end of the day, when you finish your process characterization, the process that you've defined is the process that you validated. So I've touched on analytical a number of times, but it's definitely worth covering more because it is so important to understand your product. So there's a couple different dimensions to analytical that I'd like to cover. So one is starting with the structure function relationship. So the better that you can understand your product and how it works, the better you can develop it. And so for example, if you understand a certain mechanism of action, like ADCC is not relevant to your efficacy and safety of your product, then you don't need to go into the full characterization to understand how that is controlled. So early work to understand your structure function relationship can pay dividends in the end in terms of timeline. Process characterization I've already covered. These are range finding studies and impurity clearance studies. So your small molecule component that then gets conjugated, how do you clear out those impurities, those conjugatable impurities, those non-conjugatable impurities? So having the analytics to follow all of the fate of those impurities is very important. Ultimately, your control strategy is dependent on your analytical understanding. So you have IPCs and release and stability testing that needs to be executed. And then comparability. So this is to support sort of the life cycle of your product. So as you transfer your product to a new supplier during development, you have to show that you're making the same product along the way. And minimally, analytical comparability is required. Depending on the scope of the change, you might need to do more than analytical comparability, but understanding the characterization of your product is, is fundamental. So going back to strategic supplier selection, I've already covered the importance of picking your CDMO early so that you can get in and have your process set so that it's more straightforward to file. Once characterization is complete and we go into process validation, having an understanding and experience with validation is very important. So as I mentioned, you could have a very limited number of batches in your history prior to going to validation. So understanding what levers you have and maybe leveraging some of that CPV, that continued process verification, is something that'll be important to you in order to demonstrate process control. And then post-launch. The idea being that we want to get products to patients as soon as possible. And of course, they want, we want them to be safe and efficacious. But in accelerating the program, you might not have taken the time to, for example, optimize cycle time or yields. So these are changes that you can do after you filed. And having a comparability strategy in order to do that is very important. And you can implement new technologies to achieve that. You can make process changes to achieve that. So these are things that you want to get your product to the patients as fast as possible, and then you can do some of these optimizations afterwards. So I hope I've provided you some examples of how we can keep CMC off the critical path. We, of course, want to get our products to patients as fast as possible, given the compelling clinical data. And CMC gets no relief in that regard, so we have to make sure we get everything done on time. We talked about strategic supplier selection, that partnering with a supplier that has multiple manufacturing nodes and experience in all these aspects is very important. Experience in manufacturing, experience in analytical and regulatory interactions are all key components of helping you get your product to the patient. Process characterization is paramount as well as analytical understanding to ensure that you know what you're making and you can provide that evidence in your filing. All right, I'm open to questions now, and we also have a booth um, that we can speak at later. So, any questions? Th thank you very much, Courtney. As you said, are, if there are any questions now, is the time to ask. 
if there aren't, I have one, if that's okay. Sure. Um, you talked about the complexity of producing antibody drug conjugates um, in comparison to, say, an antibody. I'm wondering if um, that has influenced the end user to outsource ADC manufacturer manufacturing more so than with antibodies or small molecules in any sense? Yes, um, oftentimes a company will have more experience in one aspect versus another. So they might be more experienced in biologics and have that capability, um, but they need to outsource, for example, the small molecule or the potent handling. And so typically um, it does require that that network, if you will, um, so that you can have expertise in all of those areas for your product. Okay, great. Well, if there are no further questions, oh no, there is a further question. Thank you so much for your presentation. Yep, that's oh me. <laughs> that's you, yeah, just say that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's really refreshing to see your slides, so it's really good. And my question goes to a hot topic at the moment, it's data integrity. And usually we talk about data integrity when we are coming to the commercial manufacturing side. So you haven't mentioned anywhere in your presentation about data integrity, but I'm sure it's something that you look at oh, yes. when you are doing the CMC work. So making sure that your instrument is qualified and all you have the softwares which are 21 CFR part 11 compliant. Is that something that you are looking at during the CNC process, or just look at this piece like once it's, you have the approval and then are going to the commercial manufacturing? Oh, um, yeah, I suppose it's a great question. And, and I suppose um, I considered it as integral with the manufacturing of the product all the way from the first product that you make that doesn't even go into humans, right? So we need to be able to demonstrate that we have data integrity throughout. So that's our batch records, that's our analytical testing, The equipment that we use, um, the experiments that are performed. So yeah, data integrity um, is, is very, very important. And, and there's a lot of data to, ha to gather, right? And so you have um, the extensive biologics data because the process is the product, right? So um, all of that and, and the small molecule. So um, that, that's very important. And then um, being able to make decisions based on those data is very important as well, right? So um, you can you can hemorrhage data and, and, and miss an opportunity to learn something about your product. And so the ability to compile that information and, and understand it is, is very important as well. Yeah.